Hey everybody, it's your Sam here, and I'm back with another video. Thank you for being patient with me while my computer was having issues. I took a little bit of a week hiatus, and we're back now. I'm going to start with another portion of my foreshadowing series, and today we're going to do pets and farm animals. Now these can be used in many genres and it can be easy to put in just about anywhere. Whether your character is passing by a farm or passing by a window with a certain animal in it or just they have a farm themselves or a pet themselves. You can use a lot of these animals in some of your foreshadowing and in some of your symbolism in your work to kind of drive home some things for your reader and get them tied up in your work a little bit thicker because we, we want our readers to be held captive right right that's the only time that captivity is good my friends we probably all have heard of animal farm it's a very famous book so that has a ton of symbolism in it so if you haven't read it you can probably pick up a synopsis or read some articles and papers on the symbolism in Animal Farm and kind of go from there. But you don't always have to use the symbolism that another author uses. You can make it your own. You can of course take my suggestions here and kind of run with them or change them up to fit your work. Some of the most common animals that your character may run into, especially if you're riding in this world, are dogs and cats, and maybe some horses. And dogs can mean a lot of different things, but they mostly stand for loyalty and friendship and protection and purpose. Dogs are often seen as great aids or they're often seen as hindrances depending upon how you're writing your dog in your book. An aide can be man's best friend. You have a dog that is with your character and they provide support and friendship and loyalty when your character might not have any. Or if your character is trying to break into something and then there's a big bad dog inside, they're going to be kind of a hindrance. The use of a dog in foreshadowing can be maybe the dog goes missing for a little bit and your character loses that sense of love, that sense of loyalty that they have, that protection that they have. Later on in the book, maybe your character is feeling lonely or they lose their home or a sense of something that protects them as well. Hopefully it's not the dog again. If your character has a cat or sees a cat, cats are known for patience sometimes. They're known for relaxation and curiosity and independence. So maybe your character has a cat, that, car that cat goes missing as well. And later on in the book, your character loses a sense of independence. Maybe they're kidnapped or something like that. And that's a little bit of foreshadowing with a cat and a dog there. Cats and dogs can foreshadow to certain segments in your character's life. At the beginning, they hold a sense of home, a sense of stability, a sense that everything is well in the world for your character. At the end of the book, maybe the dog and the cat is mentioned again. Kind of like John Wick. For those of you that have watched John Wick, there's a dog at the beginning and there's a dog at the end. I'm not going to say anything other than that in case y'all haven't seen it. But it kind of brackets the movie. There's a little bit of foreshadowing there from the dog at the beginning to the dog at the end. And it ties the whole story together. Horses can mean passion or a driving force, or freedom, or gracefulness. Whenever your character sees a horse, maybe they find a letter whenever they get home for their dream school, like Juilliard, or some dance school that they have been wanting to get into, and they finally get the letter that they're going to be accepted, or they are accepted. 
Maybe whenever a character sees a horse, the horse symbolizes their freedom. Maybe they feel like their parents are overbearing or their guardians are overbearing. And the inciting incident means that they're breaking free of that overbearingness or they're breaking free of the feeling of being held captive of being not themselves so that's a little bit of symbolism that you can use for a horse a little bit of foreshadowing too pigs are often seen as greedy and unclean and ignorant which if those of you out there have ever had a pig you kind of know that they're not really those things i mean there are different acting pigs but most of the pigs that I know are fairly smart <laughs> they are greedy granted all animals are kind of greedy you know they don't touch their food but yeah pigs so take take the symbolism behind a pig as you will kind of turn it on its head a little bit help the pigs out as far as foreshadowing goes with a pig maybe it's a break out of the norm again whereas the person is trapped in an unclean environment they're like a slave or something like that and the pig is either slaughtered or the pig is set free it breaks free so maybe that's a little bit of a foreshadowing for the character breaking free of their unclean or unwanted environment again like with the horse or maybe it's just a symbol of the person being around a pig or you hear the pig snort and a new person walks into a room and you know that person is going to be greedy not only by the sound of the pig or the sight of the pig nearby but by the person's dress you know they're in a in a, an expensive suit they have rings on every single finger or something like that they're taking handfuls of candy from the bowl instead of one piece chickens and roosters can often be a little bit different in the symbolism roosters are pride and resurrection whereas a chicken is prosperity and abundance if you have chickens and roosters together it's good luck or abundance again because chickens and roosters lay plenty of eggs and they continuously lay eggs what you can use a rooster for is maybe the rooster crows at the beginning of the book and then the rooster crows again whenever your character is resurrected or <laughs> maybe your rooster appears whenever there's another character that appears and your character soon finds out that that one is very prideful and they're out for themselves the rooster kind of warned them to watch out for that person another thing with chickens maybe the family had to sell their chickens and move and during the move they had a lot of hardships because they're no longer prosperous but whenever they get settled somewhere they get chickens again and then they start to prosper everything starts to fall into place or everything starts to be lucky for them again donkeys are often seen as humble little beasts uh, and for service because they're usually part of the hardest working animals on the farm if you have it trained to you know pull the carts and carry things and stuff like that another thing that a donkey can be used for is stubbornness so again whenever a new character is introduced if there's a donkey nearby or a donkey sounds then the reader can kind of guess that that person's going to be stubborn or they're going to be very helpful kind of like a sage or a mage or the main character's mentor maybe they come in riding on a donkey and these are just some examples of symbolism that you can use and some of the animals that are kind of common on farms or in households depending on which era that you're writing in and of course which world that you're writing in and keep in mind also the not so common animals that people might have such as bees 
bees used to be kind of common on farms, but they're not so much anymore. Bees are great communicators. They show support. They mean harmony or the sweetness of life. And they also mean that there's persistence and hard work. Hard work pays off. So maybe if your character is stung by a bee, maybe they get a little bit lazy and things fall apart around them and that they start working hard again. They, they have a, a job, a break with a job or something, and then everything kind of starts building back up for them. You know, they can get a house, they can, they can make their payments again or, or something like that. All because of the little sting of a bee the reader can pick up that something's going to turn around for your character and that they're going to change for the better. Another not so common but kind of common thing is is a ferret and ferrets are symbols of ingenuity, hidden meanings and observations. If you've ever had a ferret or been around a ferret you know that they hide objects very well and they are quite clever. So if there is a ferret somewhere in your book, maybe your character is going to meet someone that is very smart and very helpful, or they're going to meet a thief who takes everything from them and hides secrets. So yeah, that's just a little bit here and there about some farm animals and pets that your character might, might run into. Again, take it as you will. Some of these animals can mean different things in different cultures and in different parts of the world. Also, you're a writer. You can make it mean whatever you need to. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe. I'm really close to hitting my 250 goal. Comment down below with some of your character's preferred pets, whether it's a dog or cat or a horse or something unnatural. I'd really like to know. Maybe it's a animal that you've created for your world. I'd really like to know. So make sure to comment down below. As always, be kind to one another, stay safe, keep writing, and keep being creative, and I'll see you next time.